From NBC Universal, please welcome Linda Yaccarino. And here again is Stacy Shepparton. All right, I am excited for this interview. Linda and I have known each other for a very long time. Don't say it. And we've seen a lot of changes in the media world um, over the years, but I would say probably not as much change as we've seen over the last five years. So today's theme is television hacked. What do you see as the biggest disruptor in the television or sort of video industry as we see it today? Um, I think when a lot of people are asked that question, uh, they say technology is the big disruptor. Um, and I think we at our company look at it a little differently where technology is enabling the disruption. It's really the consumer behavior that has changed so dramatically. And since we're all now, because of the consumer in this video on demand world, we need to figure out a way to get them the best content wherever, whenever they want to consume it. Mm -hmm. And then figure out a way uh, to offer that opportunity to our marketing partners mm -hmm. and, and be able to combine those messages since I think everyone in the room would agree that an ad-supported ecosystem uh, is uh, the most successful way to keep consumer choice at an all-time high. And we need to figure out in this ad skipping or ad blocking world mm -hmm. uh, that we're living in of how to come together and um, secure an ad supported future. So. so with that ad supported future and measuring an ad supported future, we talked about it earlier, measurement is <clears throat> a big struggle, a challenge, cross media mm -hmm. measurement. If you're delivering content across devices, yep. how do we accurately get at measurement across those devices, and then how do we transact on that? Well, I thought that um, the, the panel that you had prior, I was up in the back and I was clapping, and I, I don't know if anyone heard me when you were talking <laughs> about measurement, but your question you asked about the accuracy of measurement, mm -hmm. I will tell you that right now, today, um, accuracy of measurement is absolutely impossible. You know, whether it is the fact that traditional television content um, 30% of audiences remain unmeasured because of whether it's OTT, mobile, whatever the, the platform is, uh, and there's really no argument about that. Uh, Nielsen, as we're all hoping one day, I keep dreaming one day I wake up and it'll be the day, mm -hmm. that they will catch up to consumer behavior, and right now they're going through a panel expansion mm -hmm. that you know about, but we still lag so far behind total audience measurement. And it's not just television that lags behind and that we have some handcuffs on, because honestly, what does a C3 rating really tell anybody, right? And then on the digital side, it might possibly be more of a mess, because you have everything, whether it's ad blocking, fraud, viewability, bots. You know, I hear some companies are allowed to sell ads where Stacy doesn't ask for a make good when you don't have the audio on. Does that happen <laughs> in television? I don't know, because you sit there and you look through you. You're like, you're really looking at that. Yeah, two um, so I can't. Mm -hmm. um, I heard this press in the room, so I'm going to stop at that. But so the, the, the measurement is completely challenged on both sides. And it puts you yep. and your clients at a complete disadvantage. But the challenge is for a company like mine is how long do you wait? So we decided we're not going to wait anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the first steps that we took was to take as of October 1st, so 20-something days, uh, we took CNBC Business Day programming off of Nielsen measurement. Now, the good news is nothing bad happened. Um, people are still watching. People are still dialing their phone when um, maybe some customers in the room uh, air spots on uh, CNBC. So it was one of the first steps, but we had to go out and seek a partner that was able to work with us for over 18 months to develop a methodology and something that would pass your scrub test mm -hmm. to say there is another metric that can ultimately promise outcome or guarantee an outcome or look at behavioral metrics that make sense and that we could talk about things that are important to them like selling 
product. So far beyond a um, period of time or a C3, C7, C infinity. I think in addition to that, uh, measurement has to, TV measurement, first of all, needs to get better at communicating to, to marketers um, what exactly we're delivering. So whether it's um, making really initial aggressive steps towards household addressability, mm -hmm. that really goes back to what you and I probably talked 10 years ago. What is, how do we get better at placing the right spot in the right program at the right time? Right? So now that right time thing is people watch it on demand and they watch it across all platforms. And I, I was actually taking notes when Karen did her open because she talked about, I think she said, TV is no longer at the center. And while I agreed a lot at the core of what she was saying, I really didn't think it was TV being at the center because really what we need to redefine is what is a television. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a screen as big as this one or maybe a little smaller in your home, uh, in addition to the screen on your lap or the screen in your pocket, mm -hmm. the lion's share of what is being shared, liked, and talked about, and check the math, fact check it, is TV-generated content, or what legacy would be termed as TV. So whether it's all TV ad-supported plus the top four digital, um, uh, digital platforms on a monthly basis, it's being driven by... TV or premium video content. Yeah. And that's what we have to work harder to come together as an industry to yeah. fix. So let's stay on measurement for a second and talk about standardization mm -hmm. because we use Nielsen now for standardization. But when you talk about addressable, you're talking about different metrics that matter Correct. to different clients. Correct. And so how do you get to a standardization or is there ever going to be a standardization that we can measure success and agree on success for each client and what matters right. to them. Well, you know, I, I would love, I, I think the currency, whether we agree or not, it's not about liking or not liking the measurement. That's not what it, it's about. But a common currency mm -hmm. is a terrific forcing mechanism that allows transactions to happen, mm -hmm. right? So we've got to get it right. We've got to get it better. We've got to get it quicker. But do I think today it's possible that we have a continuity or consistency of that measurement? No. Um, do I think we have all the tools to be able to combine um, or, or share data sets to get to an outcome that you're looking for? The answer is yes. We just have to get more comfortable of weaning ourselves off, okay, and I got a C3 rating. Right? So like at our company, we talk about one of our new data products, audience targeting platform, yeah. takes a combined amount of data sets, right? So we have the Comcast set-top box data, which is between 22 and 25 million homes. So we're sitting on top of an unprecedented amount of data, right? So we take that, which could be considered a surrogate for national, and we combine it with other first-party data from our co company, whether it's Fandango or our theme parks or CNBC, and then we take other data sets that your client or your agency may want us to combine and be able to, at least in, in almost a, a, a real-time iterative fashion, deliver you a media plan that I like to call the non-fat media plan mm -hmm. So uh, uh, of today or the low-fat media plan that will be able to get you more towards what you're looking for. Because if you think about it, you're not really looking for a C3 rating. You're looking for the particular consumer who distributes a particular behavior that you can take this premium video and have them attach it contextually and compel them to do something, like right. God forbid, buy your product. Right, but right now your platform is just NBCU programming. Are there plans to integrate this with other ad tech companies where we can go in and look at not just we can look at those audience metrics. Just in the NBCU ecosystem. Right. Okay. Are you going so, to so those we'd love into? to, you know, look at our company. We feel a big um, sense of responsibility due to the leadership position that we have in that marketplace. And we feel a big sense of responsibility towards keeping up or propping up the entire ecosystem. And there was an article in the Wall Street Journal last week that talked a lot about what is Comcast doing with its uh, top box data. Yeah. So, so the audience targeting platform I talked about, you're right, is, is just NBC Universal inventory. But if you take it a step out and use our NBCU Plus powered by Comcast, which is really the first linear addressability tool that's out there, 
has the capability and is quite able to spread out beyond the NBC Universal inventory pool. Mm -hmm. So in the Comcast uh, footprint, mm -hmm. they actually have inventory that branches out to all networks yep. and capabilities. So, so we're able to activate it there, but the reason is not about we don't want to sell any or we don't want to give you any other inventory that's mm -hmm. outside our footprint. It really is a technology and infrastructure hurdle. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, someone on the, the panel, is the second time I clapped earlier today, <laughs> was about the MVPDs being really smart and getting a really big wake-up call and saying, we have, we, we have the most premium content offered to the most people in the country. We need to come together mm -hmm. and deliver um, an, a, um, an infrastructure or an opportunity, a mechanism to transact, right, across those platforms, through those networks that we deliver into people's living room every single day or on their mm -hmm. phone, right, and be able to offer them a unified opportunity. To, but how do you take that? an industry that's mm -hmm. transacted on Nielsen, you, pr you make projections, revenue yeah, projections, yeah. you build your business model on Nielsen C3 ratings every year during the upfront. How do you take an industry and those dollars and shift them into an audience well, buying I, and be able to? Okay, well, I would argue to you mm -hmm. that that is our joint responsibility because the addiction to the heroin of the C3 rating mm -hmm. is quite ridiculous. Yeah. So then on the flip side, I say I'm doing my audience targeting platform that I'm willing to continually iterate mm -hmm. on your behavioral metric or the outcome that we guarantee. Yeah. I come off um, Nielsen for CNBC and come to a new metric, mm -hmm. right, with people nervous, oh my God, I'm not going to have the C3, but then I get asked a question like that, mm -hmm. and then during the upfront, I get specs that's like, I need 49% in prime, <laughs> and don't give me 1% more in daytime, because I'm not doing that, and I sit there and say, what are we doing? So we have to, in this on-demand world, I think day parts mm -hmm. will become less and less important, contextual marriage mm -hmm. of content being the advertiser's content and the premium video mm -hmm. that's being offered is going to become more and more important. And I think for us in this room, in addition to measurement, we would um, be remiss if we didn't talk about reconstructing or reinventing the monetization of that content. Because it's not about the 30 second spot or the 15 second mm -hmm. spot. It's about this content marketing that's got to come right. together. And if you look at our company, whether it is with USA Network foot on the gas in that, whether it has been with Mr. Robot or Playing House that only had Playing House specifically um, in the VOD space, mm -hmm. um, deals with three advertisers, household addressable ads, all branded content that aired within that. So when you yeah. went on VOD to watch it, that's all that existed. So, um, and I could give you five other examples that we're yeah. doing, but we believe that that's the future. So if we're looking at buying audiences acro across video platforms, and you know we've structured our agency and our and Trillia as integrated investments, so mm -hmm. we're responsible for video across all platforms. Yeah. NBCU hasn't structured that way. Can we come to NBC right now? The sales are still structured in that they're um, by day part or mm -hmm. by lifestyle networks, right, um, right. but not necessarily integrated video platforms yep. across um, the well, sales Well, I think you'll see that more and more often and, and sooner than later. But right now, one of the things we talked about um, or is actually in place as it relates to buying across all platforms is many of our um, upfront negotiations for, I would say, not upfront, any negotiation in about the year has included total audience, not necessarily measurement because that's mm -hmm. all a very discreet negotiation of what pieces of data you'll accept. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to buy a spot on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and you want to travel with it, and we urge you to travel with it, whether it is to YouTube or to Facebook or to many other platforms that we push it out to, mm -hmm. um, there is a mechanism in place to sell it to you cross-platform. So what we um, are pushing very, very forward with, I would say, is um, based on what you're looking for, full integration of sale and cross-platform. But yeah. again, we've got to figure out together how we kind of break those chains of legacy 
um, cable versus broadcast versus mm -hmm. digital. Yep. And, and look at all the strides we've made in measurement in VOD. Mm -hmm. And be able to, last year it was um, few and far between that VOD was included in a negotiation and say, mm -hmm. I just have to buy my linear, which made little sense. Um, but I'm happy to say that 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 hurdle is now since gone. So. so if I wanted to take all of my money that's been traditionally placed in the upfront against mm -hmm. C3 rating, and I wanted to take that and shift that all into um, delivering against an audience yeah. metric, I can do that now. At yeah, that's what the um, audience targeting platform is all about. And when you look at the the um, expanse of our uh, networks that we have. So whether it's NBC, English language broadcast, or Telemundo, all the way to Bravo E, Oxygen, yep. sports, news, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you have to tell us what you're looking for. Sure. And that's what we want to get to because we even think it's beyond an audience. We want to deliver you that audience, right? Mm -hmm. But I want you to be able to sit up here next year and say, Linda helped me sell more stuff. Right, that's our goal. And, and that's, if I wasn't able, people often ask me what I do, and that's my kind of canned answer because selling advertising time sounds a little boring. Um, but if I'm able to say I'm able to sell some new insurance plans, if I was able to move people into a showroom, if I were able to sell more jeans, mm -hmm. then we're accomplishing something. Right. And I think you have to think about the impact of when you marry the creative that many of you represent in this room with premium content, mm -hmm. pushed through all platforms at scale, that's what we should be working towards. So if data and measurement is sort of that game changer today, as we look out over the next couple of years, what's next? What should we have our eye on right now? We've talked about set-top box data and, and content and the delivery of I that think, content. I, I don't know if it's really what we should be thinking about what's next, but I think you should really start paying, we should all start paying attention, attention that we're not in an us versus them world. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, I have to move all my media plans to digital because we know what that's all about, whether it's saving money. And what you really need to be focusing on is the efficacy of your media investments. And I think what you'll see is a big change on the, let's call it the TV or the studio or the content creator sides in a change in discipline of how the windowing or licensing of content mm -hmm. is given. Because everyone needs to secure most choice or ensure most choice for the consumer and going straight to Netflix or Amazon mm -hmm. is not really going to secure the amount of opportunity that the consumer has grown to enjoy. Because if you, if you mess with that window that's coming from either the TV networks that are deficit financing or producing all that content along with the studios, it's going to disrupt, which is 98% acquired, 2% original. Mm -hmm. That being said. So I think we need to focus on the efficacy of the um, placing your creative in an ad-supported environment and what's the right balance mm -hmm. between... TV and digital. So I think you'll mm -hmm. see a lot of behavioral changes and then hopefully the technology will get better and better mm -hmm. where we can be talking about. Um, I'm not sure a one, a one currency is it going to be able to this one size fits all brush yeah. that we've been um, enjoying for a bunch of years, mm -hmm. but I think we'll all have to get a little more courageous about accepting other forms of measurement. Excellent. Well, thank you. I think what we're going to do now is Linda's going to join a um, few other media companies up here on stage and talk about media partnerships because when you talk about digital and distribution, not every media company can do it themselves. Right. And so finding the right partnership partners uh, is important in, in being able to reach ultimately those consumers. So thank you. Thank you.